All right, hello everyone. Uh, no idea, I think I'm recording, but we'll see what happens here. Uh, hey, look at that, we got about 20 or 30 people over there on YouTube, so my apologies everybody, we started a little bit late here, but uh, hello everyone! Welcome back to the Rational Investors Weekend Frivolity, the Broiler Chicken Show. Back, 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 Um, what a crazy ass world we're in here, eh? Oh my goodness. I uh, can't make head or tail of anything in here. The problem is now, too. You know, I, I purposefully go away around my birthday because I don't want to be here around my birthday because every year in crypto, it's always the same damn thing. And really, the stock market in general. Uh, sell in May and walk away. I mean, there's nothing, I, they, you know, or buy when it snows, sell when it goes. And believe it or not, uh, actually, I was telling somebody the other day, when I was uh, growing up in southern Ontario, uh, my uh, old man as a, you know, total... You know, actually, we were even joking a little bit about this before we got the recording going. Uh, the Generation X, man, we just got absolutely f <laughs> just screwed over by the system. So, really good example of that. My father uh, was part of sort of that, um, um, I guess, he was a little bit before the baby boomers. Like, he actually grew up uh, through the Great Depression. And uh, he he was a teenager in the 1950s. Um, his much younger uh, step wife, of course, that he bought the the second wife, she was a baby boomer. Um, but man, the two of them, I mean, I, you know, they live this uh, me generation. You probably maybe you've never even heard that expression before. But back in the 1970s, they used to call it the me generation, all about me, 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 me. Uh, and we were just kind of joking before we got going how, uh, man, those, those fuckers, they, they literally drained every ounce of wealth out of our economy, our society, and have literally left it a shell, uh, for us, uh, going forward here. It's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Because they always, you know, what really pisses me off, uh, especially... You know, it's probably good that the United States of America gets knocked off its pedestal here because they are so stunningly arrogant about, uh, you know, our system is the best system. And clearly their system is broken, it's flawed, it's an absolute disaster. Um, and a very few people have become stunningly wealthy um, and... Um, and, and, you know, ironically enough, you probably don't even hear the message of, like, the hundreds of millions of basically peasants. I mean, do you kind of feel like it's almost like that now, where we've actually gone back to a world of peasantry? I get the feeling. I was shocked. I went to a uh, nickel and dime burger joint the other day. Nickel and dime. I mean, it used to be sort of like the working man's. Um, uh, place to get a hamburger after work uh, with the family um, just to have like a drive-in sort of service and when I first came to BC their burgers, uh, White Spot Burger was $2.50 I mean, it's just a nice little hamburger, nice and simple you got like, you know, they used to have like a little coleslaw and a little uh, uh, fries with it and nice and simple. And I mean, that was uh, 1990s. I mean, not like forever ago. But here we are. Uh, Andrew and I went down to that same burger joint. Uh, well, you know, the chain. And they actually had outside their restaurant. I couldn't believe it. They have just drive through service now. There is no sort of in-store service. The price of that same burger uh, was um, $19. So in essence... Just in this past 20, 25 years, they've knocked the purchasing power of this currency down tenfold. Boom. Just like that. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a gentleman that was in the lounge here, and we were just sort of uh, chatting with him uh, before we got the uh, video going. And he's like, well, you know, like I'm a Generation Xer. I'm pretty pissed off at, at what these people have done. The sad thing, of course, with this whole, you know, sickness uh, sort of mask, if you will. <laughs> Interesting play on words there. 
Um, we are we're socially distanced, so uh, we can't even get together and commiserate about how pissed off we are. In fact, in the 1930s, uh, here in Canada, the situation was so bad that one summer, all of the unemployed people just all got on the train. And they all just started to head towards this country's capital en masse. And the politicians freaked out. They didn't know what the hell to do. They called it the On to Ottawa Trek. And there was just nothing to do in the Great Depression. Nobody had any jobs. Nobody had any money. Um, and so everybody was just like, screw it. Let's go, to the, let's go to the nation's capital and let's raise some hell. And I think that probably caught the politicians' attentions and the bankers' attentions. And, you know, they actually had to do something to sort of help the poor. What I see happening here is um, this is so fragmented. And um, it's you have like two or three little sort of funny characters in our society that seem to be almost like focal points for attention. And the attention really is being pointed in the wrong direction and it's being pointed towards silly little you know like digital currency nonsense which is on balance you know like society wise this is just fluff but uh what i see is an incredible amount of uh focus on on just a few amount of people are totally totally focusing our attention in a completely wrong direction and you know who actually loves this guys like joey diamond joey diamond is sitting there going we just i can't believe how we pulled this shit off i can't believe how perfectly we pulled this shit off <laughs> it's remarkable the only thing the only thing that the that the banksters fucked up on was this funny little thing called Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the thing that slipped through their fingers. And I remember Joey Diamond went on a, a pu you know, like a, you know, public, not a, I don't know, it's private television station. But, you know, remember, remember like 10, 20 years ago, we used to have free TV. Does anybody remember that? Why, why is it when you turn on TV now, you have to pay a monthly fee to watch this TV and there are tons of commercials associated with it. What the fuck happened? Anyway, we used to, years and years and years and years ago, it used to be a marketing model where, hey, if you watch the TV, uh, we'll give it to you for free. But in exchange, you know, listen to this uh, nice message from the good people at Tide Laundry Detergent. I don't know what the fuck happened to our society there. We got, I mean, just absolutely hoodwinked there. Bizarre. I suppose in a weird sort of way, though, it, that, you know, one of the sort of side effects of that is, is Brian here having this kind of ranting platform. But, uh, man, holy moly, what a crazy life we're living in. Um, you know, the problem with talking about markets and market direction right now is we're in a seasonally terrible, terrible uh, time of uh, year in the market. So, you know, you're calling bottoms right now in the month of May. That's... It's like it's you're you're statistically stacking the de deck against you. So uh, hearing people sort of prop up uh, ideas and prop up stories right now, I don't know. I think that's a little bit uh, that's that's kind of asking for trouble. Uh, and then also too, I mean, are we actually basing investment decisions on any kind of sort of fundamental valuations here? Um. No, no, we uh, Costco executive member. We have to specifically call him Joey Diamond. Okay, can't you cannot name names in this world. But when I say Joey Diamond, everybody should know exactly who I'm talking about. All right, all right. Am I right or am I right? So you all know who I'm talking about. Um. So what I'm hearing is, uh, you know, like, um, well, yeah, that that's good. This is getting really dangerous because what I see is I see people are having like ego conversations in the market that have absolutely nothing to do with valuations and what is actually value here, which scares the hell out of me. You know, like I try to show you guys this, but, you know, after a while, people just tune me out. 
right? But, um, you know, if we want to actually figure out what value is for a cryptocurrency called Bitcoin, I hate to say it, folks, and you're going to hate me for this, but there is value. And value really hasn't changed a hell of a lot over the past year or two. And this is the worst part about capitalism. It drives you nuts. It drives you absolutely fucking insane. Now, you can get these pumps and these beautiful bull markets. And I'm not saying the bull's over. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this, this market's trading on insane momentum. But at the same time, too, that doesn't, that's not a conversation about value. And what's really scary about something like a Dogecoin is, you know, I mean, doesn't anybody just say, uh, just, you know, before you go and spend your money, just, uh, you know, I got so many damn chart <laughs> lines on the chart, you can't even see it. Uh, I just want a nice clean chart, right? Just, uh, just give me a second here. <laughs> After a while, you just draw so many lines, it's just like, ah! All right, I mean, just look at this. I mean, you know, we, uh, let's see if anybody on YouTube even knows the answer to this. What would Mr. WD Gann say is a natural growth rate? What angle should price be rising at here if I draw a 45? Oh, I just, oh, damn it. <laughs> I just gave you the damn answer. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i gave away the answer but I, what i wanted to hear from all of you was well uh, a natural trend should rise for one unit of price and one unit of time so that would be sort of like uh, mr gian here right and you know an easy way to kind of do this is you got these boxes here right that may you can actually see sort of like one unit of price, one unit of time. So the irony of it all is that a move like that, that's Mr. Gann would simply say, um, let's see, how the hell do I show you this really quickly? Where are the and goes, what the hell is this? Zero, two, and four. I don't even, man, they, every time you load up these damn things, they're always changing these tools. Uh, where's the one to one? Okay, am I missing something here? There's no one to one here. Oh, there it is, one to one. Okay, good. All right, so Mr. Gann would just simply say, you know, um, don't mean to be rude, but just uh, get rid of all that. All right, there we go. Yay. There is your natural growth rate. One unit of price for one unit of time. And actually, you can kind of see it here, right? Because look what happened, you know, just even down here. Market goes zooming up, and it goes beyond that 45-degree angle. What does the market have to do? Market has to take a pause. And you could argue, okay, well, if this is the growth rate, well, maybe we're undervalued. Okay, fine, but are we maybe now back overvalued? We're on top of this 45 degree line. Do we have to maybe go through a period like this? And then, of course, good old Brian and his crazy ass W's, right? I mean, you should all look at this image and go, well, you know, Brian, it's actually pretty obvious where the last buy signal was. It's right there, down, up, down, breakout. It's pretty simple. Why don't you all see this? I don't, I don't understand why you don't see this. What am I doing wrong about this teaching? Everybody should go to Mr. Musk and go, shut the fuck up, you fucking tool. I'm not going to come in and buy your idiot coin here. There's the buy signal. I mean, like, what the hell? Is it, is it, am I, what am I missing here? Can somebody please help me? <laughs> I mean, how many of you have been trading W's? Do W's work? Can somebody on YouTube just post, yes, I bought a W in the past, and man, I've made some great money. Anybody? Can anybody attest to the fact that you're well served to try and find W's to buy? Someone? Anyone? Thank you, Waleed. I <laughs> appreciate it. Somebody. <laughs> I'm just, I'm waiting for somebody on the fucking YouTube page, this free page, just to acknowledge, Brian, maybe you've got something there that, you know, if I just wait for W's, that actually I got a pretty good odds of making money. And then, of course, what the hell's this? You're up here in no man's land. This is disastrously dangerous. 
I mean, it just, it drives you crazy. It just drives you fucking nuts. You should be tuning out, Mr. Musk. This is nonsense, what's going on here. Clearly, there's some other agenda that's going on here that he's not telling us the truth about. And that's what really bothers me about all this. Because if he would have had any kind of conscience as one human to another, he would look at this chart and he'd say, you know what, it's probably not in your best interest to come in and buy my asset here. This is a little bit overvalued. But <laughs> stupid American capitalism. If anything, it's probably good that uh, someone like Klaus is uh, resetting the system. Because this is, this is wrong. This is flawed. This is why... We're in the mess that we are, that you had a $2.50 burger 20, 30 years ago. Now that same burger is 20 fucking dollars. It's because Mr. Musk is getting some idiot to come in and buy this thing way up here. When he should, as a good citizen, and what I've been doing for five fucking years with you people, I had gotten through to some, thank heavens, is say, you know what, just let this thing calm down. Just let it calm down. Maybe, I mean, maybe over the next month or so, we go, right? And, of course, I love to get three higher lows to work with. Then at least, you know, I can say, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I got this guy who stopped the bear before. I got this guy who stopped the bear before. And I got this guy that stopped the bear before. I got all these guys that have come in here and stopped the bear, I'm gonna let them defend their trades. And if we do go down below here, then I'll just walk away and say, look at all of these guys were all wrong. I must be wrong too. Let's just get the hell out of here. So, and that's sort of what this is kind of thinking is here, right? This was two lows and W's. Remember, I'm chicken shit, so I love three lows, but that's chicken shit. I mean, this is my hard earned money. I'm not gonna go. You know what pisses me off is that there's probably people that are getting like stimmy checks that are going, oh, fuck it. Who cares? A stimmy check. It's not like I made the money. Oh, let's go buy Mr. Dogecoin here. All right. And it's just, I don't know what the odds, like to me, I'm an odds kind of guy. So if I buy a W, the odds, even if I just buy the W itself. The odds are a eh, good 60-70% that this asset's going to hold these lows. So I'm an odds guy. Can you honestly tell me what the odds are? In fact, Mr. Musk, right? Somebody on Twitter, actually ask him, because he's a math guy. He should give you a straight answer. What is the statistical odds of this price going up against these old highs versus against these old lows going forward? My hunch is this is a 50-50 bet. You have no idea which way this thing's going to go. And I never, ever, ever invest my money with a 50% odds of success. Never, ever, ever. The worst part about it here, too, is that actually I think because the market has moved up so much that actually the statistical odds of it coming back down into things like tails like here are actually pretty great. So ironically enough, the statistical odds of it going to new highs versus going to these lows are actually, I think, tilted towards the downside. But here's the problem with this market. This is basically one guy's ego. And sometimes egos uh, can get absolutely out of control and to the point where there is no logic in the market. There's no logic in price action. There's no logic in anything in the marketplace. And that's unfortunately what I think is going on here. Because frankly speaking, anybody with a sensible mind that comes out and tells you that Dogecoin is value here at 51 cents, I'm sorry. You just can't make that argument. You can't. It, it's staggering. You just cannot make that argument. Now, is there like uh, you know quantitative value to this? You know, sort of herd mentality. Uh, you know, you're going to uh, um, you know sentiment wise. You know, I, I can get somebody else to buy this thing at a higher price for me down the road because of the perception that there might be value down the road. Well, maybe, but that's not value today. 
Right, and you know, like somebody over there on YouTube saying, making references to Mars, right? You start throwing in, well, Dogecoin's gonna be on Mars. Well, what the fuck does that mean about what the value of one Doge? Does it make a difference if Doge is $100 a coin or one one hundredth of a dollar of a coin or a penny a coin? If the coin's on, on Mars, does it make any difference whatsoever? I don't think so. So, how do you actually come up with the fundamental value of one doge? That's a damn good question, because frankly speaking, I don't think it has any value because it validates its network based off a of Litecoin, doesn't it? I mean, I thought that's how this thing worked. And that's why it's so frivolous, and that's why it traded at nothing, like no sats forever. But what I think happened here, and this is just my humble opinion, but what I think happened here was Mr. Musk saw that this coin was really well distributed right across a number of people's uh, hands that really believed in it, that they were not going to sell this thing. Um, and those coins were not going to go anywhere. Um, and I think he saw that, and that, that's... That's a fucking stock manipulator's wet dream. I think that... You know, so, this also, to me, really speaks to market state as well. This is a perfect analogy of this market state where we're not really trading on fundamental valuations. I can absolutely guarantee you, hey, I've been on this planet 50, uh, what, 51 years now. I've never seen stock markets. I've never seen uh, commodity markets. I've never seen currency markets act the way they're acting right now. And I think they only act this way about once every 80, 90 years when the previous cycles established fiat currency system has just been milked to exhaustion. And at that point, we have to move to a new fiat currency system so you get this pocket of like maybe 10, 20 years where it's nobody really knows what the hell anything's value is. Um, you know, you might make the argument that uh, through World War II, right? What kind of bugs me here about our society right now is the government should be coming out and establishing price controls and saying, look, it, you can't go and double the price of a hamburger overnight for no fucking reason. But what I, the impression that I get is that that is actually the 1%'s plan. They need to reflate this whole economy, basically add a zero to everything. So then that way, you know, yes, we had like, you know, 10 times GDP debt. But if all of a sudden you reflate the economy 10x, well, all of a sudden now, well, debt's only one times GDP. Hey, that was kind of easy and convenient. Wow, that was cool. How did you do that? But the fact of the matter is anybody who saved any money uh, previous, keep in mind all the baby boomers saved all their money and bought the U.S. government bonds, and they were more than happy just to sit and collect the nice in little interest uh, coupons on the bonds. Well, all those people, they're fucked. All right? That's the whole point of this. The market's job is to inflict as much pain on as many people as much of the time as possible. And so, in essence, all those baby boomers that save for retirement, they are getting fucked now. Joey Diamond. Joey Diamond sitting there. He's, he's you know, basically salivating. They, they just pulled the fucking carpet out from underneath the American public through that 2008 cycle. With, you know, even, even fucking Goldman Sachs selling paper to their clients. And the moment that the client buys the paper, they're writing... And they're, they're, they're locking in put options on the paper that they sold the client right in front of their faces. They're taking short bets on the damn thing that they just sold them. That's that American capitalism that, frankly, is disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting, and it's the reason why we're in this mess. Hey, no doubt about it. No doubt about it one way or the other. Joey just so happens to be one of the characters. I would actually say the bigger characters um, are really two letters. We all know what the letters are. First one uh, rhymes with an E. Second one rhymes with a... <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> I can't even think. But the point of the matter here is... I, and uh, my buddy here in the Hangout, who's in Gen X with me, we're bitter as shit. 
because they they basically raped us. I mean, that's what they did. And I suppose you could argue that Bitcoin's is the attempt for the market to somehow at least provide something for us not to uh, not to be so sucked up in this in this horrible crime that that I would actually argue that this is a crime. You know, I would really argue that this has been a staggering crime that's been committed here. But unfortunately, you know, if you're not in power, and they always say that those that uh, are in power write history. So if you're not in power, then technically it isn't a crime. It's, uh, well, no, what are you going to do about it? And that's, you know, that's, that's such a terrible commentary on this human species. It really is. Such a terrible commentary. Um... So, uh, you know, there is the sort of, and, and, you know, it's interesting when I talk to some people, they ask, well, you know, is what Mr. Musk doing, is this, is this maybe some sort of, you know, cover? Is this some sort of, he's, he's actually, he has some sort of side agenda? It, that's definitely possible. You know, you might argue that might not actually be in the best interest of the 1% for us to all just walk away from the system and, um, and, um, and, and, and just, you know, head off to DeFi and uh, to hell with the, the classic economy. He might be sort of a way to try and get, get sort of part of this millennial generation back into sort of the fold there. I don't know. Tough to say. I will say, though, that, you know, I, I said a week or two ago, I didn't really like, I don't think he's a very good spokesman of crypto. That's for certain. And then what I saw here today, horrible, horrible what's going on. Because now it's sort of like ankle biting. I mean, why, why is this guy doing this? Shut the fuck up. Go away. He doesn't, we don't have to be having this conversation right now. Why is he doing this? Anyway, um... There is some sort of agenda here. I don't know what it is, but there is some sort of agenda going on here. And, you know, us in the public, we won't find out about it until after the fact. So just understand, everybody, you know, as you're watching this, that the selling man walk away. This, and, of course, given what the hell's going on in this crazy world with, you know, the, you know, the sickness and all that crap, right? Um... Just understand that uh, that I think probably, you know, us small fish, there isn't a hell of a lot we can do about this. If anything, it's kind of good. Just tell a friend. You know, I had a great experience today. Um, you know, we just got our education program going. And uh, one gentleman who I absolutely dearly love, the guy's just so awesome. Uh, he just uh, is a great, great guy. Um, and, um, he referred one of his friends and he said, uh, and, and I, th I think she came in and she's like, Hey Brian, this, the, he, this guy referred me and I'm like, and I'm like, right on, you know, because we're here to try and, you know, first off, just educate you, empower you. So you don't, I mean, anybody who looks at Dogecoin right now, if you have taken our education programs, you look at it and you go, there's no fucking way I'd ever buy that. What are you, stupid? <laughs> I mean, seriously, seriously, YouTube, seriously, public. If you take our, somebody who's taken our level one course, anybody here who's on the, uh, on the uh, call here, Anybody who's in the hangout here, if you've taken the level one course, would you go and throw all your money on fucking Dogecoin right now? This is insanity. I mean, it's dumb. It's like you're throwing your money away. Why would you do that? It's just like stupid. So I that's what kills me is that the trade is so dumb right now. Why are we even having this conversation? That's what kills me about all this. So FYI, oh, I should just tell you all. When I started to see him going to war with people like Twitter guy, this really bothered me. Something's just not right here. So I let a huge chunk of the doge go. I just walked away. Just cleaned it out. Um, yeah, I don't know whether I really want to be short because the guy's got a fucking ego, right? And he might just come and just fucking shit all over anybody who wants to short his idea because his ego is on the line here. He might bankrupt himself. There's stories in the past where guys have done this. In uh, the crash of 29, um, 
There was a famous guy who actually founded uh, General Motors. Let's see if anybody of you know his name. Who? What? Who's the gentleman's name who founded General Motors? And have any of you ever heard of the company General Motors? Even if you just watch the free videos, nobody should buy this shit at this level. Yeah, totally, Ismail. Totally. I mean, absolutely. Well, that's cool, Thomas. I certainly hope to God you didn't come in and buy up top here. <laughs> if they're free coins, great, wonderful. Jesse Livermore, no. Good try. Good, good guess. <laughs> Anybody in the Hangout uh, know what the answer is? Hey, Zach. Zach. Now, say, now actually, I, it's, I, it's so cool. I got, um, I got this wicked injection of spirit into my life recently. Uh, and I haven't had it for a while. I've been sort of just like moping around here in Vancouver. Uh, with, you know, just seeing the absolute scam that this city Vancouver is. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning, the scam. Um, so it's, it's you know, like I, I don't want to be long Canada, right? Canada, the story's over. Thank you. Very good, A. Estes. You got it. Uh, and then I see what's going on here in Vancouver. Like, this is criminal, what's going on here. This is, like, blatantly criminal. Um, and um, and I got a little, a little injection of sort of hope into my life that, hey, maybe things aren't so bad. And if anything, this is a really good lesson for all of you, right? Really, it's the analogy of should you be going in and buying an asset that everybody in the marketplace is all excited about and talking about? Is that, is that does that generally translate into actually buying value? Does it translate into actually making great capital gains? Does it translate into you know not not feeling six months later like you like a total idiot because you bought? Uh, I don't know whether you, you you've bought much stuff in your life. I've been at this game 30, 40 years, right? I hate coming in and buying tops of markets. It just makes you feel like shit. Um, I just came here. All right. Oh, awesome. Way to go. Um, four set, four cents or four sats? I don't know what four cents is. I'm long, you know, Thomas, for whatever it's worth, the rule is doge. Doge is a buy anytime it's below 40 sats. So I don't know what that is, but, uh, if it goes back below 40 sats, I'll be more than happy to buy them back. problem of course is that might take five years and you know a really good example of that and uh holy bull brian sure is ranty here today um but a good example of that is uh xvg and this is uh basically it's the exact same story just from the previous cycle uh xvg is um is a coin called verge um and um actually that's probably not the one they use and um, they got sort of picked up by the pornographic industry and uh, you know the name took off and it was sort of weird it was kind of like the sexy story last cycle and you know people made fortunes and all that kind of stuff um, and uh, what I did last cycle of course is um, you know I just have a simple rule the longer the channel the bigger the run you guys have probably seen this before boom and boom, right? Same sort of thing. I mean, how are you going to feel if you come in and chase and buy in that market? Blech. Right? You feel like shit. Don't do it. Buy against the bottom end of range. All that kind of stuff, right? So, this story, I was long from two sats. And then it went, I mean, does that kind of look familiar? Does Doge kind of look like that? Yeah, it went to a certain degree. You know, and bang, oh my god, well. So, in a weird sort of way, I think that this is actually almost exactly the same story. And there might be more upside, but the irony of these damn things is when all the dust is settled and everybody's finished and whatever tax horrendous. I mean, you don't even know. Mr. Musk might fucking blow himself up the way his ego's cash and checks here. Um, and uh, you see that this thing, it worked its way all the way right back down. There are going to be lots and lots of these stories over the next few years, people. Please understand that. you got to understand that. So, uh, you know, it's interesting how Verge just now, okay, well, we can probably actually come in back on the buy side, and you might see this again out of this thing. I don't know. 
But uh, coming in and buying this up here, ooh, that's a potion for disaster. So, I don't know. Uh, it's, and really, my sort of rants to the public right now are not so much, uh, I want a short. It's more like, man, I don't like the sound of any of this thing. I just want to, you know, maybe just hop off onto the sidelines and just let shit settle down a little while. Don't want to hear people talking about egos and fucking it's going to turn into a Twitter war and social media and stuff. That is not the backdrop for good investing. And really, that's all I care about. I don't care about anybody's ego. I don't care who's going to be the ultimate winner in this silly game. But I hate it when I start seeing like big players pushing other people around. Hey, I got a bigger dick than you. I hate that stuff. So when I start seeing all that, I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Get me out. Get me out. Get me out. Get me out. So there you go. Um, you know, when it comes to things like uh, Bitcoin, you know, like I said, sell in May and walk away. You guys are going to hate when I do this, but I showed you this before, right? There is value. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> You know, the S-17s right now looks to me like their cost of production is about 7800 bucks, And, of course, the S-19s are sitting at about five or 6000 That hasn't changed. I mean, the irony of it all is that uh, maybe this is based on coal-fired plants and we're going to get rid of all the coal-fired plants and electricity costs are all of a sudden going to double or quadruple, right, because everybody's going to be in love with Greta. Maybe that's the plan of Klaus. Who fucking knows? Uh, and all of a sudden, these numbers start cranking up seriously to the upside. But... You know, when you see an asset that looks like that, cost of production models, and you can see when we get close to halvening and stuff, how price comes back down. Well, I mean, I try having these conversations with you guys when price is going zooming up. Nobody listens to me. People get, they make fun of me. They laugh at me. But there's no way I'm going to come in and buy a Bitcoin if I see this image. This thing, even now, is probably about four or five times overvalued, which is terrible. <laughs> Right? But oh well, <laughs> what can you do? And of course, um, I don't know, does anybody see any letter of the alphabet coming in here? Uh-oh. What are we supposed to think if you start seeing things like the market smiling at you? <laughs> That's not a good sign. So, I don't know. Um, oh boy, what are these guys going on about? See, the guys in the lounge, they're having fun just watching all these guys going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this could turn into a mess, I tell you. A real mess. Uh, and, you know, like, I, please, everybody watching this, understand, I love crypto. But the problem is, what's value? Uh, and, you know, if, if you don't do any value research and you don't know what value is, like I said, I got Zach here, my level 3 TA, he popped on the call here uh, just a moment ago, um, and um, he's he's like one of our value pickers um, at the site right now. So I mean, I'm I'm especially in this kind of market state. Oh my God, I'm all about value. You better figure out what the fuck value is here, because man, you, you could get run over right, left, and center in this nonsense. And what's really interesting with all of the tweets and all that crap that these people are all firing about. I don't see anybody talking about value. Anybody talking about value? I don't hear anybody talking about value. I hear, oh, well, you know, uh, mining a Bitcoin produces this much CO2. Well, who gives a fuck about CO2? No offense, but I can absolutely guarantee you nobody at a, at a, a Fortune 500 company sits down at their annual general meeting and says, we're not going to talk about earnings and profit margins this year. We're going to talk about just CO2 emissions. Fuck you. That, you, if you honestly believe that, then you have been fucking programmed by Klaus and all those idiots. Really, really well. Because uh, I can guarantee you, at, at corporate board meetings, you, they might say something like, um, we have to take into consideration climate change attitudes by consumers and government bodies i.e tax credits in our planning going forward but at the end of the fucking day everything is about profits it's just the way business works it's not about the environment don't kid yourself so 
you know, I did find it interesting, and I'd like to see how this debate goes. That uh, there's like a, there isn't there a um, there's a environmentally friendly cryptocurrency. I think it's called like Chia or something like that. Yep, perfectly said. A S T S. You can make the argument that governments are broke and that climate change is an excellent way for them to raise a whole bunch of new money in taxes. And ironically enough, not a hell of a lot of change. I mean, I find it hilarious here in Canada, my country. Um, Ten years ago, the government spent, you know, to the tune of, you know, billions, which is a lot of money for us, developing fossil fuel production facilities. None of them are going to go anywhere. But now the left-leaning government has said, well, we are going to introduce uh, carbon taxes. Well, what the fuck? So in one breath, you're developing all of these carbon, uh, uh, you know, negative things. <laughs> and of course, they're going to tax the shit out of that. And in the other hand, of course, they're placating uh, people like Greta. And of course, remember, my leader in my country right now, the guy's a fucking school teacher. I mean, he doesn't know business from a hole in the wall. And, and our finance minister, our finance minister in my country right now is like a Barbie doll. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. She has no experience in the financial services industry at all. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, you can't, like I said uh, there a few minutes ago, the banksters know that this is like an 80, 90 year window. And every 80, 90 years, They've got to distract the public and switch to a new fiat currency system. And then, of course, put it into place and tax the shit out of the poor, uh, not the poor, the 99% of the world, and reestablish that 1% rule. That's what's going on right now. And it's almost funny when you watch it in Canada, because the bankers, they've worked this uh, school teacher who's the prime minister. So he doesn't, I mean, fuck, he probably doesn't even have that great of an education in history let alone um, uh, economics. And our finance minister, she got it. She got she was like an assistant secretary of state under uh, under um, under uh, um, a Trump. And and she took all the heat when Trump wanted to fucking like, you know, ban Canada down in the States. And she just sat there day after day after day, taking all the heat, assisted, undersecretary, assisted to the state, uh, adjunct, uh, uh, whatever, you know. And and now all of a sudden she's she's elevated because the current finance minister at the time actually was caught up in a brutal scandal. The government was caught red-handed in a brutal scandal. The, the opposition party had them by the short and curlies. They were pressing them every day. They had them, they had them, they had them. And then all of a sudden, fucking COVID happens and, and our dear leader says, well, we don't need democracy anymore. Eh, we're just going to dissolve the government. Oh, what a convenient coincidence. And we're going to put uh, adjunct assistant to the Secretary of State for Foreign uh, Relations uh, uh, and putting up with Trump rants. Now she's our finance minister. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, I mean, this is insanity. It's just, it's pure and utter insanity. It's crazy. <laughs> but what the hell, man? Uh, yeah. Uh, I know. I mean, it's crazy. You just can't write better fiction than reality. And the interesting thing is, is if you go back every 80, 90 years and you try to piece things together, you go, holy shit, this, this is not a coincidence. It happens every fucking 80, 90 years. You know, and the worst part about it is uh, Abe Lincoln. He, uh, he lost his life uh, the previous 80, 90 years because he tried to tell the bankers to fuck off. Uh, 80, 90 years prior to that, right? That was actually the shift from, the, I think, the French uh, fiat currency system to the uh, to the British pound. And, of course, Napoleon, <laughs> we all know how that went for him. Um, and, actually, I wouldn't be surprised, which would be so cool, but I wouldn't... Uh, cool? I don't know whether cool is the right word. But I do find it interesting how, historically, Napoleon di kind of disappeared for a few years. And you never really hear too much about Napoleon when he was sort of uh, out of the scene. And then Napoleon all of a sudden came storming back. Kind of like Hitler was, you know, he, he tried to take over the German government and then he got thrown in the Huskow. 
And then he came storming back. I got a funny feeling we, we haven't heard the end uh, or the last of Mr. Trump. <laughs> I got a funny feeling he's coming back. And the next time he comes back, he's going to come back as a dictator. So don't fucking say boo. You better like orange toupees. You better like uh, the, you know, the, the, the dickhead phrases and expressions that he has. Because when he comes back next time, I think he's going to be a dictator. And if you say boo, off to the concentration camp you go. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Should be, should be an interesting uh, decade ahead of us, that's for sure. Okay, uh, holy moly, rant, rant, rant. Did you guys enjoy that? Uh, Brian going off the fucking end here. I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed my... I'm giving you maybe some food for thought, something to think about, a little bit different. Who knows? Um, oh, cool. Carlos says he likes it. Uh, you know, we had the uh, level one program. Uh, and just for whatever it's worth, somebody just asked me. Keep in mind, I do this like um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Friday. We have a free video that we uh, do, Kevin and I, for YouTube. So you can check that out. And you can also come on the site for the 30-day trial, right? So uh, Nick uh, Sal over there. You know, you can come on that. We give the site membership 30-day trial away for free, you know. So, um, um uh, we talk lots of markets. Uh, it, it, Sunday, what I'm supposed to do here is I'm uh, I'm supposed to um, I'm supposed to be talking to the level one class, and they just got started, and uh, that's the reason why the video is a bit late here today, guys. Sorry. Um, um, they just got started, and Grim did like a three-hour session uh, with them. So um, I'm sure they were pretty exhausted. Um, but what I'm supposed to be doing is answering any follow-up questions that they had. Now, the question I guess I have here, so so I'll just do a real quick summary here. Hopefully, you can see A, B, C, D. Does this make sense? Uh, where is, uh, who asked that question over there? Where's part about is my fucking eyesight's going, man? Jesus, I can't do anything without glasses. Uh, where are you? Uh, Nick Sal 310. Um... Been looking at this A, B, C, D for a while now. Uh, my free videos that I've been doing out recently, been sort of thinking, you can see boxes and all this kind of stuff, been thinking that dump into the uh, latter part of May is probably, uh, probably in the cards. Um, I don't know, geez, I guess maybe it's a couple months ago. Uh, there's a guy, a pretty popular guy, does a lot of the on-chain metric stuff. Uh, Willy Wu. I mean, uh, uh, um, you know, watch his videos. If anything, consider this a, uh, a sales pitch for him. Go watch his stuff. I think it does good work. Uh, as well, there's also another guy. I think it's, uh, they call their site 69 or 71 or something like that. They have like a little scoring, how close we are to the top of the cycle kind of thing. I don't know whether I really believe that, but I think maybe we got a little bit too far ahead of ourselves here in the short term uh, with this big run up. You know, back in the spring, I got into trouble with other people on social media for going, you know, this is it's it's going on a little too far. Don't just go blindly by, you know, you, you, at some point there will be a correction, blah, 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 all that. Right. And I think we're finally getting it. Right. Um, but the on-chain metric guys, they all seem to think that there's there's some, there's pretty good buying demand here down around this sort of high 30s, low 40s. And actually, if you look at the profile here, it makes perfect sense. You can see uh, this is what we like to call a MUOC. This is like a core level two concept or volume profile here. So you can clearly see just based off of this image, there's a shitload of unfinished business right in here that needs to get done. Um... You know, reload zones. Anybody, of course, has taken uh, Brian's education program, 61.8 to 78.6. That's a super important level to me. So we're coming down into those levels. You never really know how these things are going to look in the short term. And we did just punch to a new low here. It was interesting. I did one of these Sunday videos, and we had basically the exact same scenario. This is a broiler chicken show from exactly this day. I did this uh, video, and I said... Well, watch the candle body lows here. And I thought that they would pivot the market through sort of like Tuesday, Wednesday kill zone. 
But literally, I was done the video, and they just bang straight down into that level and then straight back up. <laughs> so somebody obviously saw my message, and they're like, fuck it, man. You know, let's just go get it done. Might as well. There's no point waiting for Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> so, and that was a new low. So that's like a V bottom, which means it has to be tested again. Well, they did exactly the same thing here. Take the market down. Wicks and tails like to be eaten. V bottom, new low, bounce it straight back up. And you can see they just did it again. New low. This is now an M. New low, V bottom. But you can see we're getting into that Sunday funny time window here. Could they maybe just dip it and then straight back up here? Sure. Is this a buy signal here? Not for a guy like me. Because as I said, I still, you know, I'm a big fan of the market moving harmonically. And I often seen in my career, like this, this one move, probably people go, holy shit, did you see Bitcoin just drop from like 64 all the way down to uh, 47? Oh my God. I would actually look at that as just half of the move. And really, there's got to be another leg just exactly like this, and that's what this is. So I still think we got to work our way down into sort of like this 40. And notice there's Mountain Man sitting at 41. 38.2 off of the entire range looks like it's also 41. Remember we said that big hole in the profile there is right around 40. So why wouldn't price go down here? Seasonally, everything makes sense there. You know, the reason to buy crypto and Bitcoin and all that shit was because of the things like the Coinbase IPO. That was a big buy the rumor, sell the news. Or things like Ethereum and DeFi and the way that that DeFi thing was just going absolutely insane there. I get the impression that the Doge rally is actually just nothing. It's fluff. It's garbage. It's nonsense. It's the fact that for some reason... A huge part of our population wants to suck Musk's dick. And I don't know why. The guy's, a, the guy's a dickhead. But for some reason, a huge portion of our population is absolutely in love with the guy. Does that make for good investment decisions? I don't think so. So, I don't know. I don't get it. Doesn't make any sense. <sighs> so, also too... I don't. I think it's important that we don't confuse um, things like mutual fund buying um, and uh, value investing. Brian's chart, where you can see everything but the price action. There's <laughs> some pretty damn big circles, eh? They always say, yeah, yeah, you uh, you can always judge the quality of a guy's TA by how big his 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 balls are. <laughs> I got two pretty big balls there. <laughs> hopefully, uh, considering flea bellas, hopefully you can see this big old fucking hole in the profile at the bottom of value. That's what you gotta see, dude. Do you see this? Come in, Tokyo. Considering flea bass, I'm not going to say a damn word until you answer. considering flea bass finally says that he saw <laughs> well what's so funny about this is it's like he's like trying he's going to war with twitter why the fuck is this guy doing this it doesn't make any sense what has he got to gain out of this this is what i don't get i mean isn't he supposed to be like digging a hole underneath los angeles or something go go do your hole digging go away and what kills me about this is, God, people, like, I've been in this space seven years. And all of a sudden, this clown turns up, like, three or four years ago, and now I'm Mr. Fucking Crypto. He wasn't around during the fucking Mike Hearn rage quit days. 
You know who he reminds me a lot of? Is he reminds me a lot of Roger Ver. Where the fuck is Roger Ver these days? Doesn't this... Do, and, and how about Bid Finnext? Remember that guy? Does anybody remember Bid Finnext? The same sort of shit. Like, why is this guy doing this? Shut the fuck up and go away. <laughs> hey, there's my buddy, Colin. I love Colin, man. Colin's got... Dude, wait, wait. He, he, ain't, he ain't holding a fucking candle to your net worth right now, Colin. Come on. Come on. I know your numbers. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and my, you know, my specific message to all of you is fucking don't take any wooden nickels. Just don't. Do some research. Try and figure out what the hell value is that you're buying. Pe Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not quite sure what that means. Um, okay, so uh, what, uh, I'm supposed to be talking to level one here, so, and I, and I got to get actually going here for Liam. So uh, we started a little bit late today, so I got all my beautification uh, chores done ahead of time. So I'm not really pressed for time. But uh, Kvark, Kvark, did you? I know you shared that document with me. And, and were there any questions? Maybe there were just weren't any any, any uh, questions at all. But I know you shared that document somewhere with me. Got off some pretty good wins here today. Not really having any opinion in the market. I don't give a fuck about any of this shit. I'm just here to make money from trading. I, I just don't care. And I don't want to get wrapped up in the fucking, you know, my dick is bigger than your dick kind of nonsense. I don't know why these people do this. Like, if the guy's the richest fucking guy in the world, why is he even bothering with this? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Like, why? Why, why, why? Unless there's some... Sort of hidden agenda going on here. Anyway, okay, let's leave that. In fact, actually, I uh, had dinner with uh, with a buddy of mine here locally the other day, and I was like, "Okay, enough bitching, Brian. Let's try and go a half an hour without bitching about something." <laughs> and it was tough. Trust me, it wasn't easy. Okay, I can't find it anywhere here. So uh, let's see. Uh, Kevin, are you here? I thought I saw Kevin here. There's Zach. There's Nick. Hi, Nick. Oh, is that the document? Oh, that'd be awesome if it was. Let's see what we got here. All right, BCS questions. All right, yeah. So, oh, Jesus. Oh, okay. I got some work to here to do. Okay. So it's super cool. I uh, got the uh, level three program off and running on Friday. Man, I've got like 40 or 50 people in the level three. Um, and uh, what the hell did I just do to the damn chat room? Did I just blow this damn thing up? Oh, darn. Uh, all right. Um, I lost the chat room. Ugh, fudge. So give me a second here. It's around here somewhere. I think I have 427 tabs open. Okay, that's all that stuff. What happened to... This is supposed to be the chat room. Oh, damn it. Sorry, everyone. Equipment malfunction. Just give me a second here. So I'll figure this out. Okay, well, I'll have to do it over here. Full external chat. Boom. Uh, Got to say, uh, Seward, actually, uh, we had a little hiccup on the site over the weekend. Seward recovered very smartly and quickly off of it. So thank you so much, Seward, for being on top of things. Uh, I gotta tell you, man, just running these silly chat servers on these websites, man, it's a full-time job unto itself. So, oh, there it is. Oh God. Okay, now I'm going crazy. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> now I got the damn chat room back. Okay, YouTube page. Let's make sure this is working here. Uh, is that it? There it is. I haven't lost you guys. Hey, you're still there. There's three people that gave a thumbs down. I guess those are Musk fans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I always get that, dude. I always, you know, the bankers. I think I think Joey Diamond, he actually hired somebody to come on these uh, these uh, videos and, and specifically downvote every single video I ever do. Absolutely, Alex. There, there are people that hate me so much 
and they hate the fact that I have this very uh, down-to-earth approach that's kind of bulletproof because if you if you have three unrelated reasons to justify taking a trade location 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 indicator confirmation market structure and you don't take more than five percent bet on any one single investment it's actually really difficult to lose money uh, so if you just do that and you just stick it out and you just do every single day the same thing over and over and over. People people that blow themselves up, that take that shot, that, you know, fucking take the risk that, that doesn't make sense, that, 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 you know, buy Doge up top here. Um, they don't like me very much and they get very angry at me. So, yeah, and bitter too. We had this one guy uh, back in the 17 cycle and he took the level one course along with everybody else, and it was just a fucking orgy of buying back then. Uh, and I, I spent basically about probably about two of the three months at the beginning of that course trying to, trying to slow everybody down, slow down, slow down, put your money away, put your put your money away. Um, and uh, and and he actually wanted to sue us for his losses in crypto. And, uh, and 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 you know, like I would say something like, well, you know, we should all do the efficient frontier. Try and figure out how much risk we should take in the market. And he'd go, you never taught us that. And then it was so funny. Actually, his friends who actually took brought him to the site actually turned to him and goes, uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> Which I love. And that's the closest we've come to being sued here. But there are some people that just absolutely hate me. They absolutely hate my guts. And they will come on these videos and not even listen to anything that I actually say but just the fact that I'm doing the video they will downvote it sucks but it's just the way it is okay let's see if I can finally get to what I'm supposed to be doing here today uh, you guys gave me the uh, the document um, yeah and by all means you know everybody should know this is not financial advice so excellent comment there I, I don't tell any of you to do anything with your money I couldn't care what you do with your money it's your money it's not mine what I do tell you is, uh, you know, if you want to set yourself up for success, well, these are the kind of things that you should try and do. How about, like, have a plan? <laughs> There's a crazy idea. Just have a plan. And then let's just see if you could actually do what you said you were going to do. I know it's a crazy idea, but let's just see. <laughs> so, oh, Will, you just he just keeps firing more tweets off, eh? Jesus. You'd think that somebody would just say, Elon, just just put it away. Just just leave it alone. <laughs> Is he I hope he's not saying anything about me because I don't fuck anyone. Anyway. Uh, as I said, I'm I and I still got a shitload of that damn doge. It's just I let half of it go because uh eh, it was just a little too much money. When you're up in six figures on these things, eh, eh I don't want the team going, Brian, what are you doing, man? So I let a good chunk of it go. Um uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Peter. Okay, so questions. Let's get on to this. So, number one, Brian, how do we know we have entered bearish market on crypto? Is it already happening now? It we need to wait to know. Happening now? Now it we need to wait to know. Hmm. Um. I would just simply say uh, later, you know, if you're in the level one program, of course, you don't have any skills right now to measure whether the market is a bull or a bear. You're, you're going to be learning these skills. Um, and uh, one of the easiest ways for you to discern whether a market is bullish or bearish is what we call market structure. And we always say that uh, the higher the time frame you go, the, uh, the more sort of significant the message so the easiest thing you can possibly do to try and figure out whether a market is a bull or a bear is pull up something like a weekly price chart and ask yourself if there are any m's or any w's showing um and if you see an m on a weekly price chart well, odds are that that bull market's probably over um, and, you know, for whatever it's worth, you know, I, I, I've shown every single uh, free video I show this for the past month or two. So nothing's changed here. 
but I honestly believe uh, if we were going to compare what uh, kind of bull market we're in, you know, every four years this space goes through a bull and bear cycle. Um, and um, I think the equivalents are uh, 2013 and 2017. Uh, so the question is, uh, what's this market state going to look like uh, through the rest of this year? And that's sort of like something like, where is it? It's around here somewhere. Come on. And should be coming up right here. Uh, where is it? There it is. Nope, there it is. Right. Phew, took forever. Um, so there's uh, 2013. Uh, here's 2017. I get the impression this year is going to look more like this than this. But nonetheless, you can see both of them. Early uh, April, May, you can see we topped out. And in this case, we actually went sideways for like a good six, eight months. Eh? Uh, and, you know, maybe Mr. Musk and all the stupidity around this. That's probably a good analogy of this kind of market state. You know, we see uh, what uh, what um, um, Ethereum is doing right now. I mean, it's literally going straight up. That's also this kind of market state. Um, so this is actually what I think I would prefer to see. And I would prefer to see that, I'll tell you, the next time this market's a buy, and it's like, okay, you know, the, the smart money's getting in and we're really rocking and rolling and we'll get ready, you're not going to be hearing from Mr. Musk. I guarantee you it won't. Um, he'll come in after the fact. After the W's have confirmed and the market's broken out and it's jumped up, then he'll come out and go, oh, in a word, look how smart I am. Or whatever it is. Right? So, uh, if this is the case, and also, too, there was that uh, pi cycle indicator. Has anybody got that handy? I think it flashed sort of a topping signal. And it also flashed a topping signal in in spring of 2013, 14 here, uh, 2013. And then it flashed a buy signal about halfway through the summer. And then, you know, you can see the fall. So, you know, do we get this kind of action here over the next few months? I think actually it would be healthy. It would be normal. It would be good. Maybe just Bitcoin sits here for the next four or five months and just bangs around in this range. I think actually that would be very good, right? Um, we said uh, there's you know good old reload zones off of this range. We talked about profile. You can even see there's there's lots of unfinished business down here to be sort of cleaned up and dealt with. But my hunch is this is probably key support here in the short term. So that's at like thirty five thousand kind of thing. Um, but you know, uh, maybe maybe Ethereum has to um, has to uh, go through a big thumping here. That that could happen. You know, I've said if Ethereum does a sixty one point eight correction here, it's a buy opportunity of a lifetime. You can even see I got my little sixty one point eight just sitting there. Um, because that would look almost exactly like that Bitcoin chart. And then huge, insane rally into the end of the year. I like that. I do like that thinking. So uh, here we are uh, on uh, Ethereum right now. Um, I don't know where the hell the top was, but it looks like it was somewhere right up in here somewhere. Uh, that's interesting. So I thought we were... Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, so, you know, there is 61.8. I would keep her... And actually, this makes perfect sense. What do we say? Let's see if uh, anybody can uh, fill in the blank here. Um, if the market is rolled over and, okay, first and foremost, uh, remember I had said there earlier, how do we sort of discern, discern whether a market is topped? What letter of the alphabet do we see on the price charts? Anyone? Anyone? See, uh, you free YouTubers. That uh, uh, great, great Gertrude, what the hell's your name, dude? Great, 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 uh, uh, something or other. Uh, Mr. Wonderful has written all the fucking notes. 
And just and it's so cool because every time I make reference to him, he's like, "Yep, I'm still here, Brad. Still writing notes." <laughs> you know, yeah, he should be like, "Oh fuck!" I mean, I've written this in this damn notes. I've uh, the free notes here. I've I've written this like ten times to you people. <laughs> so even he's probably gone. This is getting redundant, man. <laughs> but if you see an M, right? Well, you know, maybe we just had a cooler jets, right? What do you think, M's? Anyone? I don't know. <laughs> So, you know, there's that. Um, but um, what I would simply say is, and who can tell me just on the YouTube page, what do we call this range between the 61.8 and 78.6 fib? Yeah, I even have it the right color. Call it something. Okay. Anybody remember? What do we call that? What do we call that? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, reloads on. Maybe Komar, you probably uh, haven't watched very long. Uh, anyway, um, sixty-one point. I affectionately call this the reload zone. It's a nice, easy way for people to remember. Uh, there's Bruha. Bruha is kicking ass in class. Great to see you in class, man. Um, so you know, I get, where I was going with all this is what is our rule? Who can tell me what the rule is? And the cool part about it is, I, are you guys learning anything on this YouTube page? For God's sakes, I sure hope you people are learning. This is free information, just giving it to you. Write this shit down. I mean, fucking put the la 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 idiots away that don't fucking teach you anything. And just tell a friend, look at, watch this Beamish guy. He's going to try and help you. I don't know. Jesus Christ, drive me nuts. <laughs> anyway so point here is what are we supposed to say if you start seeing the market come down and you're trying to figure out where the hell this thing's going to stop coming down we're supposed to say two words both words start with the same letter if you don't know this write it down Look at that, not a single answer. Chase makes waste. Ooh, I like the sound of that, Bob. Nobody? What are we supposed to say out loud? Two words, both start with the same letter. I'll even give you a hint. The letter is L. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Double D's. <laughs> you know what? You're gonna get a half marks if you if you write double D's for any question that I ask you on any exam that I <laughs> that I do. <laughs> what's the name? What's the name of the portfolio management strategy used by fund managers to diversify risk while being long in the market? Double D's. Hey, half marks. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, no nobody oh you guys are breaking my heart even uh, you guys here in the hangout nobody kvark you're here yeah thank you rush good good brew ah excellent good that you got it i see beef big things for you brew hoo hoo big things So, the rule is, look left. So, here we are. Where the hell is support? Well, we got this little low right here. So, you can see there's a little bit of a doji. I'm going to try and hold that low. If we lose that low, then where's the next sort of key support? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Oh, geez. we got to go all the way down here and here and here. And that that's that Wyckoff check that somebody was making reference to there before. So, you could see look left wasn't there somebody that was like kind of like ah, eh, technical analysis doesn't matter you can just buy this shit anywhere and psst, who cares about m's and w's i'll tell you you go in there and buy that there you're asking for trouble uh and uh carlos here says that uh this wyckoff check lines up with a nice 20 week moving average and then i told you there a few minutes ago 
What did I say? If the market trades down to this mountain man level, what is that? And I mean, fuck, you don't hear Brian say this very often. Well, half the time I'm telling you, I'm trying to talk you out of trades. What did I say if the market trades down to this mountain man level? Woo, there he is, Brandon. And you know what's interesting is Brandon, he used to always... Uh, he used to always post this uh, this poster of Alan Greenspan, and he used to call him the most wanted villain in American history, <laughs> which is great. Uh, and and ironically enough, I only now really fully appreciate Brandon's message. But it just turns out most of the guys on the floor, they all know what those stupid bankers are up to and the fucking scam they're pulling. But, oh well, it's, uh, it's uh, modern day capitalism. I suppose the worst thing is, is, and it probably will come to this, is we will be, we will have a gun held to our head. If anybody, at some point, this Bitcoin story, and maybe this is part of the whole Musk thing, is that I wouldn't be surprised if the 1% at some point are going to go to war with Bitcoin. Now, what is the war? What does the war look like? I got a funny feeling that the war is going to be you must have your Bitcoins on one of these sort of deemed uh, acceptable exchanges. And in that way, the Bitcoin becomes part of the Federal Reserve System and they can use that account as collateral. That's what I think is going to happen. <sighs> But I don't think that actually comes for a couple years. I think that's probably sort of the next bear market. Uh, I would say between now and then, there should be a hell of a lot of fortunes made here. Um, and like I said, you know, by the end of this, like it's interesting. If you go back to the Second World War, the the apex of that sort of war was, uh, in my opinion, was when um, when uh, Hitler shot his wad and went after Russia. As soon as that failed, then basically the, the war was over. And it was just a mop-up exercise at that point. Um, I think also, too, 80 years before, if you look at the U.S. Civil War, that uh, same thing as Hitler, Hitler fucking threw a Hail Mary and it failed horribly. I think, um, you know, and this is great. You Americans, right? Let's see how much you actually know your country's history. Uh, but uh, I remember uh, Robert E. Lee was the uh, commander of the uh, the Army of Virginia. And, um, and uh, he threw a Hail Mary at Gettysburg. And it, it didn't work. Um, so clearly... These people are driven by a motivator. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that believe that Hitler was basically put into power by, um, by like, the King of England and stuff like that. And, you know, it's funny because the King of England at that point was a no Nazi uh, sympathizer. And he, I think he had that. That was one of the reasons why he abdicated. <laughs> so um, the point being that... Um, my hunch is that this crisis will probably come to a head 2022 and a half. That's sort of the same kind of, you know, uh, uh, time frame as... Um, was it Barbarossa? I think that was... What was the name of the German campaign? I think it was called Barbarossa. And then also, uh, you know, Meads fail the uh, Pickett's charge. Poor old Pickett, man. Fuck that guy. Poor guy. And all of his, you know, the guy started the day with like a 10,000 strong army. And at the end of the day, he had like 450 guys left. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> and, and Robert E. Lee goes to him because, uh, 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 Colonel Meade, uh, can you please reform your army? And he goes, uh, uh, sir... I have no army. <laughs> so sad. I mean, basically, in one day, poof, gone. The, the cream of the crop of the Confederate nation. Anyway, 
So the point being that uh, I think that this comes to a head in about a year, guys. So we got another year of this shit ahead of us. <laughs> oh, God. Um, it's interesting because one of my assistants here on the site... Um, um, you might find, actually, I'm going to uh, re relocate myself. Um, I'm going to uh, leave uh, the uh, the legal responsibility to house Liam up to uh, the state here in the short term. Uh, because I, I did some real estate shopping, and it turns out that for basically the exact same lot, um, here in British Columbia, literally identical lot... I, can, I pay about seven million dollars and I can't do anything with the, the land uh, because you know frankly speaking it's it's not really great agricultural land here in BC um, or I can go over to uh, this one particular place and I'm not going to tell you until I actually relocate there and for about 10 percent of the money I can get almost exactly the same land with equivalent sort of facilities on the land and I can actually farm the land and actually uh, have the land pay for itself so it's sort of like um, why the fuck am I living here it just doesn't make any sense the only reason why I'm still here is because of Liam well Liam's 21 I mean uh, if uh, if uh, well, we spend a couple years where I go and get this uh, farm all set up and you know sustainable and stuff and then just have like a, a place here where every couple months i just come back and spend a couple days with him here Man, i think you know 21 years old i think he's old enough to be able to handle that but the numbers are just getting so compelling it's it's stupid staying here economically i mean it's just absolutely stupid so i may not even be reporting from vancouver too much longer and i'm motivated i am super motivated so um yes Barbarossa was that the name of the uh, the campaign against Russia I think that was the name of it so anyway uh put it put the you know put it all together here this is a, I mean clearly don't fucking buy this right now you're just asking for trouble uh can we get that big honk and mountain man dip and then you know maybe come back against value here and maybe hunt for some W's down in here I think it'd be just an absolutely incredible buy and that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. I've actually raised a lot of money. For a guy who actually wants to be invested, I've raised a lot of cash. <laughs> and I've got my stink bids. i got stink bids working on the corn here at 25 bucks or 25 grand. You know what's so funny about this is I still have June $16,000 put options on the books. <laughs> I would I, it would I would laugh my fucking ass off if those options actually <laughs> traded to any kind of value here at all. I don't think they will, but I do still have them on the books cuz you never know what's going to happen in this crazy world. Um, as we sort of said there earlier, I kind of like that woolly woo kind of thinking. Okay, so, man, I, man, I talk, oh, it's one o'clock, fuck, I gotta get off my ass here. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna have to burn through these questions as fast as I can, I'm sorry guys, terrible, uh, terrible, terrible, terrible. So, I don't know, hopefully I answered that question, that does damn long-winded, wasn't it? Okay, what do you mean by uh, run a small business of trading? Well, technically, that's what you are all here to learn how to do. Um, I don't know, you know, and a good idea. Uh, probably, if you're going to write a question on this document, can you at least put like your initials, or you know, like a screen name or something, so that when I answer this, I'm talking specifically to you. Because I don't know who asked this question, if they're even here or not. But if you are here, then, you know, just let me know. Are you here? Who asked this question? No? All right. So the point here is that um, we're here to make a profit, right? If you have a business, you don't open a business to lose money. At least <laughs> maybe you do. I don't. I, I don't think that would be a good idea. Unless maybe you're the government. Governments love to open businesses to lose money. But we're here to make money. So we're here to run a business. And we want our business to be profitable. And frankly speaking, you should approach every single investment that you make like you are running a business. Is this a sound investment? 
Am I taking appropriate risk? Have I, uh, you know, filed my taxes? <laughs> Am I, if, if I'm running this out of a registered account, have I bought actually a, an asset that actually is um, acceptable for the registered plans? Uh, so the point here is that I always approach trading as you are running a small business and your objective is to run a profitable small business, not a business for a loss. So that's, that's what I mean by that. Right, number three, hello, Brian. Can you share your vision of the current fiat system and the launch of CBDC? What the hell is CBDC? Is that central bank digital currencies? What impact can they have on the market? Um, well, I think it's probably too soon to really talk about digital currencies taking over the fiat system. I think it probably is what develops out over this next 15, 20 years. I think blockchain is going to be one of the main drivers of this next growth cycle. It's just as simple as that. Um, I thought it was interesting commentary recently. Uh, Federal Reserve uh, Chairman, uh, Mr. Powell, uh, weighed in on China's uh, desire for uh, central bank digital currencies. And it's an interesting fact in China that actually they spend more money on internal policing than they do on their military. So it just goes to show where their priorities are. They're more worried about people from the inside of the country than they are from people from the outside of China. So I think that's really important to understand about China. And it's a huge driver as to this whole Chinese central digitally currency bullshit. Is it's another form of control. It's another form of, you know, this CCP sort of nonsense about, um, you know, central planning. I think that the... Uh, the people that run the fiat currency system, to a certain degree, they I think they're kind of looking at China, kind of scratching their heads and saying, well, you know, if China really wanted to be like a dominant player and wanted to take over the system, well, then why the fuck is are they still pegged to the U.S. dollar? So it clearly shows that the U.S. dollar is the only currency in the world that really has any value. Why? Well, because it's the hegemony currency. As Mr. Powell says, it is the world's reserve currency. They won the Cold War. They are the shit. As a result, they can do any old damn thing they want. They want to inflate the economy, make it all the prices 10 times the worse so that the old debt numbers don't seem nearly as big in our new inflated economy, well, tough shit. You, 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 <laughs> you can go buy Russian rubles if you want, but or Chinese digital yuan. But the irony of it all is like the Chinese digital yuan nonsense. Technically, it's actually just buying the U.S. dollar. Why? Because the goddamn Chinese currency is still pegged to the U.S. dollar. And I don't understand why anybody in the market doesn't talk about this. You want to fix the problem with international trade and China's influence and shit? Just kick China off of this goddamn peg. But I don't think it's as simple as that. I think that in the year 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, the Americans went and did a deal with the Chinese, basically doing a deal with the devil. They said, buy our bad government bonds. They will, in essence, create a balance sheet for you, communist country. You had no balance sheet before. And if you don't have a balance sheet, how the fuck are you supposed to run your economy? So the deal was 2001, 2002, 2003, Americans going to go prop up the Chinese economy by basically buying Chinese goods that were produced by slave labor and not saying boo, which is horribly unethical, horribly morally corrupt. Nobody even seems to give a shit 
about how horribly morally corrupt this all was. How through the 1990s, there was a very specific campaign after the end of the Cold War. They started off by calling it downsizing. What was that? Well, that was the American corporations firing their high-priced American workers and moving manufacturing overseas. They moved it to Mexico. Guy in Mexico is the number one part auto parts dealer in the world now. He's one of the richest guys. Why? Just because they fired all the high-cost workers out of Detroit and they moved all the production right across the border into Mexico where they paid people pennies on the dollar. Morally bankrupt. Nobody seems to talk about that shit. I mean, the irony of all of this is that you can't make the argument that there weren't tons of little tells along the way here that, hey, there's something going on. And it's just simply, we're moving when the communists were destroyed and that socialist movement exhausted. We're moving back into the Scrooge world, right? Dickens. You could argue that Mr. Musk, Mr. Bezos, Mr. Gates, they are now basically Scrooge. Everybody knows who Scrooge is, right? Does everybody know who Scrooge is? Anybody who needs a refresher on Ebenezer Scrooge? Well, we're just moving back into that world, folks. I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be debtor's prison soon. None of you better have big mortgages. And these interest rates all of a sudden mysteriously go up. They're not going to foreclose on you. They don't want the property. They're going to keep your family in permanent debt and send you off to a concentration camp. That's what's coming. Hope you guys are ready. <laughs> so, there's my comment about central banks <laughs> and digital currencies. I don't know whether that helps, but we could talk lots more about it down the road. I'm running out of time here. I talk too much. So I'm just going to leave that at that for today. Um, I still fully expect uh, Willy Woo's kind of crazy two, three hundred thousand, um, 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 two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand Bitcoin objective by the end of the year. Because I think there's going to be another crisis. And all of the money that was spent over the past, uh, you know, what, year or two was going to be completely waste of time. And they're going to have to go and do another massive stimulus. They're going to have to inflate the economy even more. They're going to have to print even more money. Nothing's going to change. Because like I said, this doesn't come to a crisis head until 22 and a half. So I could very easily see Bitcoin 100, 200, 300,000 at the end of this year. And then sort of, you know, top out sort of January, February, just like we did 17, 18, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, 22 and a half, the government, you know, finally gets control of this situation. And then they really start to drop the fucking hammer on things like tax evaders and stuff. So be careful. Pay your goddamn taxes um, and don't fight the system here. It's not worth it. We're small fish. They are big fish. We're nobody. Just, you know, play from a position of strength. Don't take no fucking wooden nickels. Don't get shilled into buying la 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 nonsense, you know, markets that are going 10x up. Don't listen to somebody that says, well, technical analysis doesn't matter. Fuck you. That's just asking for trouble. Don't listen to people that say risk management doesn't matter. Fuck you. That's just asking for trouble. We're here to run a small business of trading and we want to be profitable. So you want to make damn sure two rules of investing. Number one, try to trade with an algorithm, some sort of system, right? That you know that when you pull the trigger two out of three times, odds are you're going to win. That's not easy, right? You got to stack up the reasons, at least three unrelated reasons to justify you taking that risk. And then number two, don't take too much fucking risk on any one trade. Just don't do it. All right. Uh, let's see what you got here. What's your equity markets prediction for the next year? Believe it or not, I think the stock market's going to, just like Bitcoins, we're all going to fucking just face rip up here. <laughs> <laughs>
It's hyperinflation 10,000! The hyperinflation 5,000 dancers. Dun, 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 dun. Everybody fuck now. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Whoops, what did I just say there? No. <laughs> I get all excited whenever I think about my solid gold dancers. Um... You know, you know, for a seasonal period, seller may walk away. Usually, the market doesn't bottom until sort of the second or third week of June. Then, as we sort of get ready to rock and roll into um, into um, um, the summer, eh, we should probably go into a nice little summer silly season. And of course, the the uh, the growth numbers. What a joke! They're just going to be fucking through the roof. You know, all the central planners have told us that. So, man, I would uh, get ready. Like I said, I mean, I don't have a problem calling uh, 200, 300,000 Bitcoin into the end of the year. It's it's that it's that sort of telegraph now, I think. Uh, and, you know, that's one risk asset. I could see the stock market do the same thing. All right, number five. Do you think that banks and hedge funds are purposely keeping housing off the market that they bought for pennies on the dollar back in the... Eh, with U.S. taxpayer-funded bailouts, but I digress to keep prices inflated. Um, what I think has happened here is uh, prices can only inflate when the government reported statistics, CPI, PPI, all that kind of stuff, they go up dramatically. Then when you can have that print, then all of a sudden everybody, carte blank, can double prices, right? So it's so stupid. CPI goes up like they, they're going to print like, oh, 4% annual CPI rate. Okay, so that means if uh, something's a dollar, next year it's going to be a dollar four. You go to the fucking white spot, the burger was $10 before COVID, mysteriously all of a sudden now it's $19. What the fuck? How is that 4%? It's not even remote. But that's the way this stupid system works. It's like everybody waits for permission to raise prices. Then when sort of everybody's like, okay, yep, hey, hey, prices are going up. We got inflation. Yep. Bang! They fucking just hit you right across the fucking sh the, the, the nose, right? Double the price. Like, wait a minute. I thought it was used to four percent. What the fuck? So, that's what I think's going on. <clears throat> yeah, and what a double fucking insult, eh? These stupid government surveys. I mean, that uh, Subway sandwich indicator. I've told you guys repeatedly. It's a perfectly good indicator. It works wonderfully, and I think prices have like gone up three or fourfold in the past uh, twenty years. Um, and, um, and that would imply about a four or 5% annual inflation rate. And yet because these government statistics, I don't know where the fuck they get these numbers. It's just such a crock of shit. Again, I mean, it's stunning the crime that, that they're literally pulling off here. I mean, this is criminal, but there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, these, these guys, they, they own the lawyers, they own the politicians, so they can write the laws. I mean, it's it's literally theft, but there's nothing anybody can do about it. Shocking, eh? Uh, what are you saying there, man? What a show this is! <laughs> Way to go, Mr. Beamish. I think the bear market lowered my IQ. Can't believe I thought I. I can't believe I thought I didn't tri. I don't know what that means. Uh, McDonald's is oddly expensive lately, <laughs> is it? Uh, three, you spent three dollars for two meals? Actually, that's not so bad. Oh, 30, 30, yeah, yeah, oh, Jesus. Yeah, well, and that's the sad part about it, uh, Colin, you're Canadian with me. I mean, they just, they just bent us over and there was nothing you could do about it. And, and we had to sit there and listen to Justin. What a fucking... Oh, Jesus. Well, what would you have us do? Come on. I would have you maybe have a finance minister that could stand up to these bankers and say, you know, it's not in the Canadian citizens' best interest to have their standard of living just cut in half. Is that in the citizens' best interests? No, it isn't. 
Is it in the banker's best interest? Oh, yes, it is. Because now all the bad paper that they lent out, well, psh, it's nothing in comparison to the deposits. <laughs> oh, but what would you have us do? Oh, God. I mean, that Justin Trudeau, man, he got played. If he is as stupid as that, then he got played by the bankers harder than anybody else. And it reminds me of Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson, in his last days in office, said the biggest error he made in his entire life was passing that Central Bankers Act in uh, the Christmas of 1913, which in itself was a total scam. They totally rammed it through the U.S. Congress. So anyway, there you go. Um, okay, so what's your equity market prediction for the next year? I think up until the end of 2022 or 2021, 2022, according to our long-term cycle studies, is not supposed to be a good year. So be careful there. Do you think that banks and hedge funds are purposely keeping? Um, yeah, I don't. I actually think to a certain degree that they're long a lot of um, a lot of uh, um, um, housing through uh, the reverse mortgage business. So a very, very popular here in Canada, the financial services industry. A lot of baby boomers who bought their house and then paid off their house, all they've been doing for their retirement is just they just keep uh, they just keep uh, um, withdrawing and doing a reverse mortgage, reverse mortgage, reverse mortgage. So what that means to me is that the banks actually are along a lot of housing equity. And that's why they won't let prices drop and why they're so happy with this COVID, because the COVID totally, uh, you know, we, we'll say sickness, don't say that word, because then, you know, this big brother jumps out at you. But it's remarkable how this sickness has totally given all of these bankers, like, complete blank check. Yeah, they, they got away with it. Perfect. Awesome. We won. So as a result, I think that's why prices are going up, right? It's because the bankers own the paper, and there's no way in hell they're going to lose money. They're going to reflate the economy, make all this stuff so ridiculously expensive. Remember Klaus? You won't own anything, but you'll be happy. Well, you won't own anything because you can't afford it. They're going to just jack the prices through the roof. And I've told you this before, right? If you want to know what the next 10, 15 years in equity is going to look like, and Klaus is going to be damn happy because he got all your equity out of you. But basically, you know, here is uh, what uh, the last cycle, the respective cycle looked like, right? So this is the Great Depression and coming out the other side of the Great Depression. This is all those asset prices going up, 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 up. No way I'm ever going to be able to afford a home and it just keeps rising and rising and rising. Klaus owns all this shit. So it's like you're, there's no way you're going to be able to get in here. Um and uh, if you look, where are we right now? Well, you know, there is the image right now. It's the exact same thing. So there is the overlay. You can see it happening as we speak. And what's really interesting about this is this was a fantastic study, M2. And then all of a sudden, the central planners and the central bankers went, oh, shit, people are actually cluing in. And there were, like, congressional meetings and stuff with M2 money supply prints and people going, what are you bankers doing here? Are you really pulling? Are you really pulling that big of a fraud? And then all of a sudden, the central banks go, "Oh, we're not going to publish that data anymore." <laughs> Can you believe that? I mean, talk about a scam! Blatant, right in your face. They go, "Ah, we're not going to use that data anymore because that data is going to have you question our plan. So we better not publish that data anymore, fuckers." <laughs> it never ends i mean it never ends it's shocking how blatantly corrupt this world is oh goodness anyway um so hopefully that helps you a little bit uh there we say okay uh yeah taxpayer fund yeah i you know i i think to a certain degree you know the banks probably had a bunch of paper uh they transferred a bunch of these bad loans of course off to the fed right so you could make the argument that a lot of the bad paper that was on the bank's books has now been transferred over to that fed balance sheet whatever the fuck that is and of course they're going to hold on to all those bad bonds and shit and they actually made the case that uh one of the best investments the United States ever made, but the government made it, not the bankers. 
Whereas in the 1930s, the U.S. government went up and bought all the bad bonds from the Great Depression. Uh, Tennessee Valley Authority, all that kind of stuff. And it was one of the best investments the United States of America ever made because, you know, eventually people did pay, you know, the mortgages off. And, um, and, and they bought those mortgages at like pennies on the dollar. So it's a huge win. Um, the banksters see this and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're not going to fucking let you do that, government. We're going to hold the paper this time. And we're going to realize that monstrous profit. So to a certain degree, that's what this is all about. They didn't want to give the, the bad paper to the government, so they're going to inflate the economy out of this problem and they keep all those profits themselves. Again, you, you know, when you peel back the onions of this corrupt society, you realize, man, this damn, this goes deep. And there's not a damn thing any of us in the public can do about it, which is just so sad. All right, do you have a strategy to scale out of LOL positions at a potential top? Yeah. Yes and no. I mean, by definition, LOL, you're not supposed to scale out, right? You're always long. That That's the definition of it because you just don't know how high high is. And, I mean, look at a stock like Microsoft or even Apple for that matter. You know, uh, if, if, and Apple's a good example because uh, in uh, the 1990s, Apple basically almost went under. Um, and uh, you could have bought Apple stock. I remember uh, <clears throat> Dr. Hans Block. Um, week after week after week, he used to come on nightly business report back in the nineties and tout Apple stock, and it was like two, three, four dollars a share, you know, with only like you know like a hundred million shares out. So I mean, just staggering if you had actually listened to Doctor Hans Block. <laughs> I don't know how much you'd be worth now. I mean, the the percentage returns are shocking. So I mean. Would a little old lady still be long a bit of Apple stock here and just keep shilling it out? Yeah, I think so. So I don't know whether little old lady and like cashing out actually even are in the same sentence. Um, I do like the idea, and this is what I'm going to have you do in this education program. I do like the idea of you actually sitting down through this first week or two of the program and just asking yourself, what the hell do you want to get out of all this? Why are you doing this? You know, we got one uh, site OG. We'll get him there, son of a bitch. Where he's like, oh, I really want a Tesla. I want a Tesla car. <laughs> Uh, no comments about Mr. Wonderful himself, but, you know, I want a Tesla car. I want a Tesla car. So I'm like, okay, dude, well, fucking let's plan. And let's, you know, if it's like you know, we're going to do three trades, we're going to bang out, ha uh, you know, uh, maybe sell all of it on a triple, right? And we go from like 5000 to 15000 to 45000 boom, 45000 enough to buy yourself one Tesla. So probably more importantly here is I want you to tell me through your strategic planning, through your verbal diarrhea, you probably are all going to get sick of me saying that, why are you actually doing this? Once you've defined why, why it is you're doing, what you actually want to get out of this, well, at least then you have sort of an end goal. And my suggestion is, if you want to, like, little old lady, just keep banging away, banging away, banging away. As soon as you hit that goal, fucking ring the register. I'm done. I'm off to the Tesla dealership. Okay. So let's get further explore this. Uh, but, you know, my funny little stories about Doja, what the hell was I supposed to change my name to? I mean, they never did take it to that insane number, and I didn't think they would. That's why I said those things. <laughs> like, I'm really going to change my name to a woman's name. I mean, come on. <laughs> but I, I was sweating there for a couple days, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but I, I made those outlandish statements because I thought there was no way in hell that would ever happen, and indeed it didn't, so thank heavens. <laughs> but... Um, but I put an upside objective, and I said, 
Uh, look, at, if they take this stupid thing up and the damn position's worth a half a million fucking U.S. dollars, then fine. I'm going to ring the register and I just blow the whole thing out and just walk away. And, you know, for whatever it's worth, understand, I still got a shitload of doge on the books. I just don't have as much as I used to have. <laughs> uh, okay, next question. There are certain types of personalities, yep, uh, that do better for certain crafts. Yep, uh, any personality type that excels at trading. Well, I mean, the interesting thing is, is you've sort of defined trading as just one word. I mean, this word, trading, carries so many connotations. I mean, are you a day trader? Are you a swing trader? Are you a position trader? Are you a scalper? Are you an options trader? Are you a derivatives trader? Are you a penny stock promoter? Are you a, a you know, CDO, reverse mortgage nonsense, right? So this word here is is very, uh, it's it's a weighted word. So, I mean, ironically enough, the answer is yes. There are different types of personality types that key, that sort of speak to different types of trading strategies. You know, I happen to be an ENFJ, which means that I need a lot of structure in my life. The more structure I have, the better I do. There are specific trade setups that are highly structured. And I can I do very well at just following the setup and not really thinking twice about it. But I can tell you there's some uh, traders even in our day trading room, they couldn't handle trading my setups. It would drive them crazy because they're just not that personality type and they're like scalping. They're taking like, you know, 30 minute or 30 second charts <laughs> trade setups. So, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, the question ultimately, and somebody even put uh, there in the uh, in the YouTube page, it's really all depend about trying to be honest with yourself. Figure out what type of person you are. Uh, go through the personality test. I think they're you know I think they're very valuable. So it, Seward actually, I was shocked when uh, Seward recently talked to us about the personality test and how. Over there in in uh, in the Netherlands, hell, they use them uh, the personality test to build teams and stuff, and make sure they've got appropriate, uh, you know, members of teams that don't conflict and stuff. I mean, that's how serious they take it. Uh, you know, I'm kind of like a loner a little bit to myself, so I look at it more kind of like a personal thing rather than a team thing. But I can see the logic in the team as well. So yes, yes. And also, too, on this site, and we'll probably talk more about it in the coming weeks, uh, but we even asked uh, people on the site to uh, do a personality test and just sort of post what, what your personality is like and what are the type of setups, the strategies that really appeal to you. So maybe you might go into that document on the site and go, hey, yeah, there's an INFJ. That's me. Oh, yeah, he likes it. Hey, I kind of like that, too. Yeah. And then at least you get sort of like a framework of uh, similarities. But the answer simply is yes. But we got to figure out what type of trader you want to be. This is just too open-ended of a word here. Okay, Exhibit Bliss. J Joe I O. Okay. Quick question. All right. I'm going to... Suspend trading with real money, as Grimm suggested. Do you know of a good service that does uh, bot trading for crypto through API that has good results? <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, it gives you 20% annualized. Uh, no, no. 20% uh, monthly compounded guaranteed. Plus, they'll come to your house and they'll bake a fresh batch of cookies once a week. Um, no, I, I don't know anybody like that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is adorable. This is, if anything, this is the whole reason why we actually teach this course is because this doesn't exist in the world. Um, there will be people that will sell you this idea, but at the end of the day, ironically enough, a lot of algorithms and bots are only as good as the people that program them. And 
you know, you could actually go and buy somebody's algo or bot, and because it doesn't fit with your personality very much, what we were talking about up here, you can't make money with it. It will drive you crazy. So, no, I don't like this type of thinking. And if anything, the whole reason why you're here at TRI to learn the process is we want to get you out of this thinking where you just go to some third party person and you say, oh, just go and make money for me. And you just assume that they're going to make money for you. Remember, I told you that lawsuit guy. Those are those kind of people. And I hate that about our society. Where there will be literally, I used, when I was a fucking broker, and I guarantee you, it's going to come to these YouTube people. They don't realize it, but, you know, that SEC guy, at some point, he's going to get around to YouTube, and he's going to be like, what the fuck are you people doing? This is totally illegal. Um, and also, too, I would uh, have a very strong cautionary word to the people that are involved in the crypto shill right now. That SEC chairman used to teach a course at MIT on crypto. He knows all the games. And I've had a few people recently sort of, you know, explain to me what's going on in this crypto space. And I can absolutely tell you without a shadow of a doubt, about 80 to 90 percent of what I'm hearing is outright illegal they're doing it because nobody is holding them to account. But when this shit hits a fan, people start losing serious money and the lawyers start coming in and then they start looking at what these people have been doing. I can tell you, somebody's going to have their fucking nuts cut off. And the worst part about it is you just don't know who it's going to be. They are going to pick somebody out of this space and they are going to fucking railroad them. Sure hope it's not you. I can tell you by me saying, I don't care what you do with your money. You do with what your money is you please. I don't care if you buy my idea. Couldn't care. I'm doing what I do with my money. If you want to join me, great, awesome. If you don't, don't give a rat's ass. Because I say that in almost every single video that I do, and if somebody comes to me, I will play that every single line. Um, I think I'm okay. But I can tell you, man, there's some really, really shady activity going on as we speak. So I know that when this falls apart, the stories that are actually going to make this place fall apart, which they're, they're, they are being done now. The BitConnect is happening now. You just don't know about it. By the time we actually do know about it, it'll be over past tense. And everybody goes, <laughs> did you get BitConnect? No, I didn't, but that sucker did. <laughs> wonder where SEC prison is. I don't even know where the hell that is. <laughs> And by the way, I wouldn't get SEC'd. I, you know, the Canadians here, they use, um, what do they call it here in Canada? Oh, God, the regulator here in Canada. Um, the IDA, the Investment Dealers Association. That's If you're in Canada, those are the people you have to be concerned about. Um, okay, so I'm trying to teach. I like your idea of putting your money away. That's smart. I do not like you basically just going out and saying, well, I'm going to give my money to this person because they said that they make a great return with a bot. And I don't know. Let's see what happens. That That's that's foolish in my opinion. It'll work great as long as the bull market and you'll be like, ooh, look at all the money I'm making. Then the market rolls over. I'll be connected. And it's gone. That's the way it goes. All right, can you take a look at ADA versus ETH? Do you see any short opportunities for ETH right now? Now, if you're a level one -er, do you think I'm going to want you at this point thinking about going and strapping on ETH shorts? Hmm. <laughs> Cheryl, what do you think? You think that's a good idea for a level one -er who has no idea about the process? <laughs> uh, I think that's kind of asking for trouble here, folks. You know, I would suggest, and, you know, it's entirely dependent on where you are in the world. 
if you really want to, you know, uh, play the short side, go buy a put option on um, on uh, Ethereum. And then, you know, that way it's an option, right? Most money you can lose is just the purchase price of the option. Um, can I, uh, all right, let's see what we got here. Um, how do you handle, whoops, euphoria and depression market states? What do you do to avoid emotional extremes? All right. So there's a, there's a really easy way for you to figure out whether you have too big of a trade on. And that is, do you give a shit about the outcome? If you give a shit about the outcome of the trade, then probably the trade size is too big. So the absolute way um, uh, I get rid of things like euphoria and depression from my trading is I trade small. So, you know, there's no reason why you can't take 1% of your stake. Maybe go buy an Ethereum put option. 0.1% um, of your stake. And really, what you, you know, try, whoever asked this question, try to remember this one fact. And it's a fact. It's not just made up. It's a fact. If you can do better than 30% annualized rate of return over a five-year period, then you've beaten more than 90% of all investors ever in all of history of investing. You've beaten 90%. Isn't that kind of what we're trying to shoot for? We want to be up in that, that highest percentile, right up in that group that, you know, like 95% of the people in this world can't do this job. All you got to do is get 30% annualized rate of return. That's it. So technically that means if you go and double your money on some sort of trade or, you know, like 10x on a fucking cryptocurrency, then really you're done. <laughs> but what ends up happening, and it's so tragic, is somebody will go get a 10x on a cryptocurrency and then they'll spend the next six months looking for that next 10x, that next 10x, that next 10x, and they end up giving most of the gains right back to the market. And then we go into a bear market and then, you know, they spend the next year or two just watching everything melt down to nothing. So, most important thing is don't take too big a bet. Keep the bets nice and small. <laughs> three inches, eh? Well, for the record, I'm about seven and three quarters, and on a good day, I'm around eight. <laughs> For the record. <laughs> Which, if I understand correctly, means I'm actually above average. So that's kind of good. And that probably explains why I don't have a great need for, like, big fancy sports cars. Or I don't have a great need for, you know, going out and having, like, you know, being a player and all that kind of shit. But anyway, that was kind of a joke, Eric. Hope you got that. Um... So uh, the absolute number one uh, thing and the reason why probably you're too uh, emotional about this is the bet size is too big. And, then, and let's just think about this in nice simplest terms. Let's say I uh, in a year I do uh, 50 bets. I mean, here, let's see if I can write the numbers down. And you see for yourself what I'm talking about here. So in one year... We will do 50 bets. So how many bets is that in one week? <laughs> uh, carrying a, an apple on the, in, in, in his palm, right, Eric? <laughs> I'm going to do 50 bets in one year. How many bets is that a week? And even you get to get, take a couple weeks off in a year. It's one bet a week, right? That means one bet a week. Well, can you find a trading idea in the next week to go and place a bet on? I think you probably could. And let's say hypothetically that we're going to uh, we're going to risk one dollar on the bet, and if we are right, we will take two dollars. 
And then let's say, hypothetically, um, eh, we'll be conservative and we'll say we're going to bet 60%. So I, I think we can get up into the 60, 70%, 65 to 70, and 66 is my magic number with all the, you know, three unrelated reasons, all that kind of shit, right? Um, but let's say 60%, just hypothetically here. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that, um, what is it, 60%, so uh, 30 bets are going to be winners. And I'm going to take $60 out of the market, right? And that means that uh, 20 bets are going to be losers. Oops, best. What time is it? I gotta get going here soon. Um, and uh, of those twenty bets, I'm gonna lose uh, twenty dollars, right? Okay, so um, fifty bets, uh, sixty percent win rate. Uh, so thirty of those bets are gonna produce sixty bucks. Twenty bets. I'm going to lose $20 right off the bat. So my end result at 60% is um, what am I doing wrong here? <laughs> uh, 20 dollars, 60 bucks. Oh, uh, 30. And I take 20 bucks, so 60 bucks. Okay, why 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 am I why am I confusing myself here? <laughs> oh Brian, what a duckle head. Okay, well let's just do the math. So thirty bets, um, and we're gonna take two dollars. Um, yeah, but I started with fifty bucks, right? So I should be up forty dollars, but I've done some math wrong here. Uh, okay, what have I done? So 60, 20. Yeah, but why am I not getting my original capital back? I've missed a step in the math. I've been talking for like two and a half hours here, so I'm doing something really stupid that I can't see. Thanks, man. Um, so if I put down a dollar here, so one times 30, that's 30 bucks. So equals $30 spent. And that turns into $60. Then one times 20 bets. That equals twenty dollars spent. Uh, goes to zero. All right. So my end balance is sixty dollars. All right. Makes sense. Sorry, we're fifty. End balance is 60, so $60 minus $50 starting balance is equal to $10, and $10 divided by 50 equals 20% rate of return. So this is a pretty simple model. Remember I said that uh, for... Um, for you to beat like 90% of all investors ever, you have to get that 30%. So at a 60% win rate, we're actually up at around 20%. If we can get up into that 70% win rate, then 70% uh, of uh, 50 is 35. 
So that equals 35 spent. That turns into uh, 70. So 1 times, in this case, 15 equals $15 uh, spent. That turns into 0. So, end result here now is $70 minus 50 equals $20 divided by 50 equals, what's that, a 40% or something? What's that? What's the magic number? Magic number is, is it a fraction or is it an even number? Oh, it doesn't really matter. Calculator. Boom. Uh, 20 divided by 50 equals, boom, 40%. So, you can what's really interesting about this, right, is that 40%, we are absolutely killing that historical rate of return average. 20%, eh, we're beating almost all investors ever, but we're not killing it. And the irony of it all is I want you to somehow sneak your way somewhere in between here. And I think it's actually realistic. So, you know, think of it this way. This is do it placing one trade once a week. That's it. One trade once a week. Where all we're going to do is we're just going to say if we're right, we get paid $2. And if we're wrong, we only lose a buck. And we don't even really care. Like you can see, if we bat like 66%, that means we're going to be wrong 33% of the time, which is a pretty big number. So this is what I really want you to try and think. And the irony of it all is if you can change your mental mindset into this kind of thinking, then all the stupidity of that fucking Musk guy just disappears. It's meaningless. It's garbage. It's nonsense. Who gives a fuck what that guy thinks? We know, looking at the Doge chart, there's no way there's a two-thirds chance you're going to get a two-to-one risk reward buying the asset now. It's like 50-50 coin toss. It could go up to the top of the range, could go down to the bottom. We want to buy those Ws where there's a good, you know, 60-70% chance that the idea works. Are you guys getting this? Does this make sense, what I'm saying here? Because i got to leave it off here. I sure hope you got that. I mean, it was kind of stupid the way I couldn't do the math there. But I hope you all understood the logic here. If you do more than 30% annualized rate of return, I don't give a fuck about Doge. I don't care about the environment. I don't care about your stupid government policies. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to run my small business where if I'm right, I get paid two bucks. If I'm wrong, I lose a buck. And I'm going to expect to be wrong at least 33% of the time. That's all I care about. And politics, all of that stuff, it's meaningless. Okay, so that's sort of the way I want you to think about markets. And of course, when you do this kind of thinking and you vetted the setup and you know, you know, all tangonators, bots, whatever, you know, I mean, the bot is three to one risk reward. This was two to one risk reward. I mean, what do you think? What happens to these numbers if you change this number to three? as opposed to two. <laughs> I mean, it gets ridiculous. I know some guys on the site, they only consider risk reward trades of five to one or better. Now, how often do you have to be right if you get paid $5 if you're right and you only lose a buck if you're wrong? You don't have to be right very often. So what's more important about this equation is this. And then just making damn sure you just do what you say you're going to do and just take the fucking setups. Don't have an opinion. Just trade. Yeah. <laughs> Some guys trade a, a fog and bomb to one. <laughs> and the irony of it all is there's no... that That's not actually unrealistic. The guy fucking runs... Uh, Interactive brokers, that's how he got rich, was trading fog and bomb to ones. 
<laughs> okay, I think I'm going to leave the rant at that. Uh, got to go get pretty for the boy. In fact, I got to get the hell out of here. So I hope you guys enjoyed that offering. Uh, you know, congratulations to all the people that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at this nonsense. Oh, for real? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, don't get sucked into that nonsense. That's all bullshit. I mean, if you want to make money from trading, great. But don't get sucked into this. This is just BS. Go find those Ws. Go find those breakouts on volume. Bullish divergences and indicators. Great trade locations. Put these people with their ego. Put that nonsense away. It's, it's a waste of your time. All right, everybody. Uh, great to hear that the uh, school program's up and running and rocking and rolling. Of course, we'll have a great uh, daily brief tomorrow, so maybe pop in if you feel like it and uh, take advantage of our 30-day trial, that kind of stuff. You know, just FYI, with regard to the screener, since you're still like working like a dog building all this shit out, so we're not really at the point of actually even selling this just yet. Still very beta, but we're working. We're getting there, trust me. And I got to tell you, man, some of my signal pages are just looking so fucking awesome. Look at this. This is so cool. I got my like my screeners page. These are all Brian's sexy screeners. And look at this. Key reversals. Key reversals. 9 EMA momentum. 9 EMA through RSI and OBV divs. RSI 50 line breakouts. Look at this. It's so cool. Weekly hammers. Weekly key reversals. 13 e Oh, this is so awesome. So, I mean, they're there. It's coming. And actually, we even have, like, a community screeners built out. You know, I think uh, you've heard of that guy before. Um, so, um, we're, uh, you know, as the, as the saying goes, we've never been closer. <laughs> never been closer. So, uh, all right. I'm going to try and shut up now. Have yourselves a great day, everybody. Uh, wish me luck with Liam. Thank you so much. I love those uh, positive wishes for Liam. It really helps me a lot. Uh, PMA for the win. All the best. And the only thing left for Brian to say at this point is a big uh, bye.